Hello everyone, I'm Annie. Welcome back to my channel. So I uh, have been preparing and planning and strategizing for this video for a long time now. And I think I know how I wanna present it and I hope it really helps you guys in response to all of the questions, all of the requests for a menu planning method video. So I wanna walk you through the method that I use. I've used this method every week for 12 years, almost 12 years. Guys, this method works, it's simple, and it's flexible, absolutely flexible. So if you have a large family or a small family, a big budget, a tighter budget like I do, if you have um, access to large stores or you live maybe like in the country or something like that, or you have smaller stores, this method will work for you. If you have any allergy restrictions or diet restrictions or anything like that, this method will work for you. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, this method is flexible. And I guarantee you it's gonna save you time and it's gonna save you money. So let me jump in. And the last thing I wanna say is, if you are having trouble being consistent and menu planning, on a consistent basis, or you don't feel like you're saving as much money as you could, or in any way you wanna improve and tweak your menu planning system, then I highly recommend you follow my steps that I'm going to lay out exactly as is without really tweaking them a whole lot until you've really hit a consistency and then you can adapt it to fit your lifestyle. But even then, again, this is a flexible system. So don't worry, it's not specifically for me and my larger family or anything like that. This method will work for you. Okay, so what I have here is my everyday planner. It's got my calendar, my appointments, all of that kind of stuff. And then this is actually my wallet. So it is a leather planner from Designs by Planner Perfect. And in the front are card slots. I can't show you the front because my driver's license is out. Um, but I have all my credit cards and stuff like that, my driver's license in the front. So I actually carry this around as a wallet, has this um, insert here where you have your menu and then you can have your grocery list. And then I also have this errands book. So this is where you can just write down, you know, like I need to go to the library and I need to go to Walmart and I need to do this and return movies. And um, so this is a great little thing to have, but I wanna show you how I menu plan. Okay, so like I said, if you're really feeling like you're not consistently planning, you're struggling, you've never planned, you're not sure if you can plan, anything like that, and you really just wanna improve it, I suggest you follow my steps exactly. And the very first step addresses one of the biggest issues that you guys have responded to me and said is the hardest thing for you guys, and that is consistency and having a time where you menu plan and figuring out a way um, and motivation to do it consistently. So the very first step is schedule your menu planning and making a grocery list as an appointment in your week. Uh, hopefully you can get it consistent, um, have it on the same day at approximately the same time every single week. That's gonna be um, kind of like a pro tip right there. Uh, if you are not able or think you're not able to do that, then at the very least, um, sit down today and schedule at your earliest convenience when you're going to menu plan and on that day, treat it like an appointment. This is self-care. This is taking care of you. This is blessing your family members. This is um, taking care of your budget, taking care of your finances, taking care of your health. This is important. I treat it as important as a well exam that I would take my kids to, um, as important as me time uh, on an afternoon when I need to just recharge and refresh. Menu planning is that much of a blessing, that important to you and your family. So for right now, and I've had different days of the week um, <laughs> over the last 12 years. Some days it's this day, some days it's that day. Um, it changes for different reasons based on my schedule, based on when we get paid and have a paycheck and things like that. So do whatever works for you. But you can see, I have it down on Sunday, menu plan, grocery list. So that was this past week. Um, let me go to the previous week. Menu plan, order groceries or grocery list. Let me go to the previous week. Where are you previous week? 
menu plan, order groceries. I make it an appointment, I treat it like an appointment, and because I do that, I am consistent, and I have been for 12 years. So, step number one, figure out a day and a time when you can do it consistently. If you're not sure when is best to do it consistently, um, pick a day anyways, see how it works, and treat that as an appointment. Treat it as a business appointment. Treat it as if you were taking your child to the doctor for health reasons because it is so important to menu plan for your family's overall health and well-being. So that's step number one. Step number two actually also involves a calendar. And the way that I implement this step is I just, I don't want to... I don't like, how do I say this? I want to make smart decisions on my meals. I want to pick meals that are intelligent for what I have going on. So let me give you examples that I've done before. So sometimes, can you guys see that? I will write things down in pencil off to the side, either over here or over here. Sometimes I'll just use the same color pen, but I go through my calendar and I say, one, is there any day that I know we're going out to dinner um, or we're going out to somebody's house, in which case I don't have to cook, right? If so, I will write that down. I do not wanna plan a meal and waste time thinking of a meal that I don't have to. So that saves me time and I'll just write dinner out. So let me see if I have an example of that. That's very rare for us to have something completely scheduled. Here's one, out. But it does happen. I love it when it happens because I don't have to plan that meal. Um, another one where I, in my situation, I don't plan a meal as if my husband is going to be gone. So here he was gone overnight for a men's retreat. So I either do super simple things like pizza or even like cereal for dinner. And technically that to me is not planning a, a meal. And I just make sure to have those things on hand. So if you have something similar to that where you have left overnight um, or you have this or something, write it down. Um, the other thing I do is, are we going to have to quick run out of the house? So on Wednesday nights, my kids are in Awana, and that means that we have to leave the house very early, um, and I need to feed my kids beforehand. So I pick a meal on that day. Again, I'm trying to pick something smart, right? I pick something that is quick to fix, and also is a favorite of my kids because I know they're just gonna scarf it down and not gonna have any issues. It's not gonna be something we haven't had for a while. So maybe I have some kids voicing their displeasure at having this rather than their favorite food or something like that. I pick something really simple, really basic, filling, and that my kids love. So we just, we I fix it, we eat, we leave. And it's amazing. Um, something else that I will note is if we are going to have like a potluck or we're going to have people over, I fix different things if I'm having company. Also, I probably need to get more food, either doubling a recipe or, you know, I don't typically make dessert uh, just for our family or any sort of appetizers or anything like that. But if I'm having company uh, or I'm going to a potluck, I might need those types of things. So I want to make note of it. There's Nothing worse, I guarantee you, there is nothing worse than the day that you're going to have friends over when you're already cleaning your house a little bit extra because you wanna bless them and have a tidy home when they come over so it's hospitable and welcoming. If you're like, oh, I forgot to get this at the store. Oh, what should I make? That is the worst, the worst ever. So I like to have all of my stuff ahead of time. I like to put thought into it. Um, the week that they're coming, I get it with my normal groceries and I plan ahead. I plan ahead. So let me think if there's any other examples. So like here, we had some friends over. This was my meal. Um, sometimes if I know we're gonna be busy all day, I wanna get something that I can put in the slow cooker. So it's cooking all day and when we come back and I'm tired and it's close to dinner, all I have to do is serve it or do a little bit of minimal prep. So what is it, um, looking at your calendar, what can you do to help yourself on specific days. So that is one reason why um, I would recommend either taking your blank piece of paper where you make your menu and labeling it Monday through Sunday or using a pre-made one like this is because if you're going to make notes about having certain meals on certain days, if you're a free spirit and you wake up and you think, oh, I'm in the mood for this, you definitely don't wanna accidentally eat a meal that you have scheduled for something specific later. So this is why it's a method. If you're a free spirit and you wake up and you're like, you know what, I'm feeling like tacos today, um, that's what I'm gonna have, then do it. Have that on your 
you know, you've probably got the ingredients already, have that that evening. Pick anything from your list on any day that you want. Um, the only exception would be if you specifically are trying to help yourself. If you're trying to have something planned for a specific day, so that way you have it and it's easy uh, and simple for you, don't eat that meal. Okay, I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. I think it did. Anyways, step number one, schedule a time to menu plan and make your grocery list. Step number two, go through your calendar and make notes for yourself about what kinds of meals you're going to need on any specific day. If you don't have any notes like that and it's just gonna be the same old, same old, you just leave it blank. That's totally fine. You don't have to work hard or do anything. It's only there as an option if you need it. And then the next step is to actually start filling in the meals. Now, kind of similar to the calendar one um, is do the easy meals first. And for us, that means we always have tacos on Taco Tuesday. So the first meal I fill in is tacos, just because it's so bizarre. Again, I've done this almost 12 years. And if I don't do that first, and I start at the top and I write down whatever I'm gonna make for Monday, I will get to Tuesday and sit there for a minute thinking, now what should we have on Tuesday? And I'll get finished with my menu and look back and go, oh, I just planned something then and we like tacos and I'll have to cross it off and rewrite it. I don't know why, but that will happen. So if you know that on Fridays you always have pizza and Tuesdays you always have tacos or whatever, you know, whatever the version is for your family, Write those in first. It's gonna be simple, it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy, and you're gonna see the progress and you're gonna have fewer things to plan. And it's, it's awesome, it's awesome. And then I personally, just after I filled in those ones, start on Monday and go through the rest of the days and I pick a main dish. And then our in our family, we typically have one or two green vegetables with dinner. So it could be a salad, it could be Brussels sprouts. Um, we have this cucumber salad that I make, which is basically chopped up cucum cucumber. Um, you know, maybe we'll have green beans. And I make sure to put a main dish as well as sides on my list. And that's it. That's step number three, actually. Finally going in and actually writing down the meals. Okay, I'm going to add a little caveat in here and be very clear about something. Again, this is my method. It has worked perfectly for 12 years. And part of the time, um, part of those years were years where it would take me an hour or more to menu plan. And here's the reason why. And I don't want it to take me an hour or more. It's because when I got ready to do this step, I would instantly open Pinterest or I would pull out a cookbook and I would start to leaf through and think, what do I want to have for dinner? That is a huge no. I highly recommend that you do not do that during your menu planning session. So when you have scheduled in your appointment book or Google Calendar or whatever you use and you say, I am going to menu plan on Sunday afternoon, you wanna to try to keep it to 30 minutes or less. Well, how do you keep it to 30 minutes or less? By not browsing recipes. I will get to when you can browse recipes in a second. Um, one thing that's really helpful, hang on, let me, I'm opening my planner off screen here so I can find the page I'm looking for. What you wanna have, and again, I'll tell you when to make this, uh, cause you definitely don't wanna make this right now, but have a list of family favorites. It can be 10 meals long. It can be 50 meals long. It can be separated into sections like soup, chicken, meatless, blah, blah, blah. However you want it, use that and just quick fill it in. Don't overthink it. Fill in your meals. That is step number three. Again, don't worry if you're like, well, how am I supposed to have recipes? I have no recipes. What, what am I supposed to put here if I have nothing to put here? That's gonna be at the end. Stick with me, stick with me. I guarantee it's coming. So the next step, step number four, is to actually create the grocery list from the meals. Now, you may have noticed that I actually only plan dinners and that's just how it works in my family. At the end, if I have time, I'll address what I do for breakfast and lunch. But 
no matter what you do, if you include breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you can do exactly the same thing that I do for my dinners. It's a method. Um, you can do the same thing. Like, is this day for breakfast? We need to be out of the house quicker. Maybe you want to pick a, a really quick and easy breakfast that day. If you have um, a lunch where your husband's going to be home and you're going to be all together as a family, maybe you actually want to do like some sort of hot lunch that day and make it delicious and filling and you're all gonna to be together around the table rather than just you know grabbing sandwiches or something like that. So you can use this method for breakfasts, for lunches. Um, I do it specifically for dinners only and um, I, hope that, I hope that helps. But I just go, um, I find the best way to make sure I don't miss anything is to start from the top and work my way down. So um, for chicken Alfredo, I make my own sauce. So I needed Parmesan cheese, and you know, I just, I go through and I write down what I need and I include my side dishes and I just go, I just go. And honestly, every once in a while, I will be right in the middle of writing down, you know, what I need for tacos. I need the shells and the meat and I need cheese and lettuce and tomatoes and sour cream and sour cream will make me think, oh, we're out of yogurt. So I'll throw yogurt down, but then I'll just pick back up where I left off. So my strategy is to make sure I don't miss anything from a recipe or a meal, to just try to stick with these first. And then when I'm done with these, I kind of go through our family's regularly eaten things, such as milk or eggs or, you know, cheese that we just have for lunches or, or lunch meat or something like that. Things that are not in these meals, but that we usually have, um, because we either want to keep them in stock or we eat them regularly, and then I will add those. So I start with my menus and meals, and then I add in those extra things, and I just write my list. Now, oh my goodness, I lost my train of thought for a second. What was I going to say? That was weird. For a second there, I forgot what I was going to say. I actually had to pause and, <laughs> and think through it. Okay. So you might be wondering, well, if I'm not allowed to open my cookbook, how am I going to remember the ingredients for Philly cheesesteak sloppy joes? Okay, that's the exception. If you have already written down a recipe that you are going to make, a family favorite or something that you've seen on Pinterest before you have on your list, um, at this point you can, um, when you're making your grocery list, open up the cookbook, double check to make sure you're not out of an ingredient and use that to create the grocery list. That's easy because all that is all that you're doing with that is is copying um, where the time gets wasted. And I do this all the time. That's why I've really um, come up with this part of the method and really stuck with it this last year is I do not search for recipes while I'm making my menu or my grocery list. I, again, I'll address that here at the end. It's at a completely separate time that I might do that. And there you have it, guys, those four steps. Schedule a time, make menu planning a priority. Think of it as a health appointment, self-care, whatever you need to. Schedule it, find a time that works. Use your calendar while you're planning to make smart decisions about um, what kinds of meals that really are gonna work for your family. So check your calendar if you're gonna be out of town or somebody's not gonna be there for dinner or something like that. Number three, actually, Plug in the meals as quickly as possible. Do not overthink it. Um, choose from your family favorites list. And then step number four is to just start at the top and go through each and every meal and write down all of the ingredients that you need to create that meal and put it on your list. And that's it. You should be able to, with some practice as you develop the habit, be able to do all four of those steps in 30 minutes or less. Um, so if it's taking longer than that, it's either because you're developing the habit and it's kind of like a new muscle and you're working through it and you're getting it done, um, or you're, you're pulling in um, recipes, like you're trying to browse Pinterest or you're getting distracted or something like that. So block out that time, try to really be able to focus. Um, I know it takes me longer if my kids are interrupting me, so I try to do it when certain kids are napping or they're playing nicely. Uh, and things like that and, and do what I can not to be interrupted because that's hard. That's hard. I miss things on my list when I when that happens. Okay, I would like to address some questions that I anticipate you guys having. Um, number one being, how, how am I supposed to create a list of meals if I'm not allowed to look at Pinterest or cookbooks? I find that the best way to 
to fill in, let me find that list um, in my planner again, to fill in that list and have a, a set of frequently eaten meals, frequently liked meals, family favorites, is to do this just at other times. Um, now with Pinterest on our phones, uh, honestly, my husband and I like to watch a TV show in the evening and I will scroll through Pinterest then and I'll add to this list. Um, I will browse cookbooks in my spare time. I don't do it during my menu planning sessions. I find other times. So if you're like in the pickup line um, at school, the car pickup line, if you're getting your tires fixed, if you're at the doctor's appointment, if you're waiting in the dentist's office, anytime that you're kind of sitting and waiting, that's when I like to browse recipes. If I feel like, you know, the we're sick of these meals or I want to um, look for some new stuff, anytime like that, that's when I do it. And I save it so that way when it comes time to write these down, I've already gone through the thought process. I've already checked to see that it's a realistic recipe for my family and it's something I would actually cook. Like if I see something on Pinterest I like, I don't pin it, I actually go to the recipe. I read the list of ingredients, I read the steps, I take a careful look at how long it's gonna take me from start to finish and make a decision. Cause it might be the most delicious looking recipe, but if it's got more than this amount of ingredients or it's gonna take me more than this long, I'm not gonna pin it. I will never make the meal and I will hate myself for choosing it. So it doesn't get pinned. So I have a real strict process before it even makes it to one of my boards. And what I'm doing is I'm setting myself up for this moment to be able to write down a recipe that I know is gonna fit my budget, fit the time that I have, fit my family's likes and dislikes, and actually be something I will not hate myself <laughs> for attempting in the kitchen. So find those recipes at another later date. Take a few of them that you wanna try and add them to this list. Don't make a list all of recipes you've never tried. Try to stick with some basic meals. Um, things like tacos and pizza. They're not really recipes. You might need to look it up. You know, how do you make the meat? Maybe you want a chicken or, you know, one where you do the meat in the slow cooker and it's pork or something like that. That's a little different. But tacos, I wouldn't categorize really as a recipe. Um, breakfast for dinner to make eggs and bacon and toast, not really a recipe. Um, so think, don't just think in terms of like, casseroles and soups and things that have a recipe. Think of main meals that you enjoy. And here's one, if you're trying to go from um, a family uh, or an individual where you've been eating out a lot and you wanna eat more at home, just think about the last you know, 20 things or the things you typically order at a restaurant. Is it always a hamburger? Is it always some sort of chicken dinner? Is it always some sort of pasta meal? What is it? And then find a version of that, not even a copycat necessarily, but if you're always, you know, like if you're eating lasagna all the time when you go out for a restaurant, at, to a restaurant, just find a basic lasagna recipe and make it at home. Um, so that's another way. If you're uh, not even sure where to begin or like what meals you've liked in the past as a family, then just think about what you guys have ordered at restaurants recently and put some of those as meals on your list. Now, obviously there are some meals you can really only get at the restaurant. Save that for those special times you do go to the restaurant and think about the other times, what you like, what you dislike, and put them here. Let me think, any other kind of frequently asked questions I think you guys will come at me with. Um, if you are a free spirit and you don't feel like I explained well enough how this can work for you, let me try to attempt that again. So you might, <laughs> you might be breaking out in hives thinking, well, I can't plan Monday through Sunday. I wanna be able to pick what I want when I want. Um, I still recommend that you try this. Seven meals is a lot of flexibility and you might be surprised. So instead of thinking Monday through Sunday, think of these as seven choices. And as long as you didn't need one particular meal for a particular day, again, like having friends over or something like that, then every day you wake up, on Monday you have seven choices. What sounds good? Pick from any of those and make it. On Tuesday, don't feel like you have to have tacos. Think about your remaining six choices and pick one of those. Um, one thing that I was terrified of, and I was like, there's no way, and I spent all this time searching cookbooks every single time I sat down to make my menu plan and grocery list. 
I would, I would spend hours on Pinterest and in cookbooks because I thought I would get bored. And the idea of having tacos every Tuesday, even though they're my favorite food in the entire world, was just terrifying. And then all of a sudden, um, I forget exactly how it happened. I think it was in a season of life where I was in a uh, in my high risk pregnancy with with baby number five is when I think it started. I planned tacos every single week because it's something that my husband um, could make easily, and and I couldn't always be in the kitchen, so it was a good one um, for him to take over. And we have had tacos every Tuesday for like the last two years and no one in my family is sick of it. Now, sometimes certain meals you would be, but tacos, you know, you're able to have a little bit of variety. But I, th I think you get my point. If you're a free spirit, then go for it. Pick whatever else on your menu that you want. Don't feel like you have to have pizza on Friday because you wrote pizza in the Friday box. If necessary, just number this one through seven and you know you have seven meal choices. Um, this is gonna save you a lot of time and money. If you're really, really a free spirit and you just you truly can't lock yourself in this far, um, try to plan two or three days at a time. So when you menu plan like this, it saves you a ton of time every week thinking about what you have to make and making decisions and, and all of that. It also saves you the stress of that. But then again, it also saves you money because you're not eating out, but it also saves you gas and the time that you have to waste continually going to the store. Even if you go to the store to pick up three items, it really takes much longer than um, if you would just get all of your stuff all at once. So at the very least, I would say pick like three days and menu plan for three days, every single meal that you're gonna need and, and do it that way. Well guys, this video is getting really long. Um, I hope my method is inspiring and helpful. And I definitely feel like I could easily do a follow-up to this. So drop your questions in the comment section and I will start collecting them and maybe do a follow-up Q&A as far as kind of the themes of those questions to try to supplement this and almost be like a part two. But I really just wanted to get the whole four-step process to you and then see what kind of thoughts you had from there and how I might be able to describe this more. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you are gonna save time and money this week by putting this into practice. If you are, let me know in the comments as well, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.